Hey guys, so I'm doing a weird little impromptu video over here, I suppose, of how I do my panel work. And I'm using Tamiya Pastels. These little things. I'm hoping the camera catches that because I'm just, the camera's way up high and it's pointing down on hopefully what is, uh, is the model, so I hope you can see most of this. The model is painted. Everything is done in terms of the uh, the panel painting, but it's still a big empty canvas. There's a lot of places where you can get in and do a lot of different detail work, and that's where paneling comes in with pastels and airbrushes. And I've done both, and I like both, but this is fast, it's easy, it looks slightly different than airbrush paneling, but the uh, the basic idea is the same. So I'm gonna just get in here, and uh, I've already done the top, which most of you are, have already seen, and I'm just gonna get in here with the bottom and go as I can, and you'll just, just follow along and we'll see how this goes. Now I've already started a few of these here because these match what's on the top side and I was painting my uh, painting my mailbox as you can see so hopefully I can keep that off alright so what I'm gonna do is use a post-it note and I'm just gonna create little lines now there's two different ways that you can do this and because I'm doing vertical lines along here, I'm going to strike this way, which creates a slightly harder edge, a slightly harder line. Now if I wanted to do something, for instance, right here, this is going to be more... For this one, I'm going to do a little bit lighter. I'm going to take a single solid edge and stripe it like that, and then slowly go this way and sort of brush that out, feather that out. Now it doesn't look like much when you're doing it like this, but when you take the post-it away, you can really see that edge. And I'm going to match it over here. And I, th I feel like that's probably the hardest part of this whole thing is matching what you do from one side to the other and you, you, you're thinking to yourself, wait, what did I do? What was, what's my next step? And it's easier if you just do them. If you've got a big model like this, you do it both at the same time. And I will do right here. And again, this whole video might be absolute shit. I don't know what it's catching and what's not. But you see, I'm lightly dragging it from the front to the back. And you can use the same post-it note for a long time. So right now the color I'm using is uh, a gray pastel. I've got a couple I'm going to be doing. I'm going to get in there. This is the set that I'm using right now, and I'm mostly using this gray right here. I might use a little bit of this yellow later on. I'm obviously not going to touch the green. And then later on, I'm going to get in there with this metallic blue and this burnt copper here. Just to, You've got to be really delicate with this because that's a bright color. And then this soot here, it's, it's actually called oil stain. That's this set right here. Uh, that's a great one for when I'm doing my final weathering. Those are the things that are going to look like pockmarks and laser burns and whatever. It doesn't have to be exact, you know, each side doesn't have to be in the exact same spot. As long as it's mostly close, 
It's not like anybody's going to be coming in there with a caliper saying, oh my God, you're, two th you're three hundredths of an inch off on one side versus the other. And if it doesn't, it's always good to do it lightly and pull it away. And if it's too light, you can always come back and add a little bit more. It's a hell of a lot easier to add multiple light coats than it is to add one big coat. If that happens, though, if you come back and you say, holy crap, that was way too much, I made a mistake, uh, for these particular weathering pastels, to me a thinner is actually fantastic for removing your mistakes. All right, so I've actually got a little bit of paint touch-up that I have to do along the, the top here. This is painted properly, but that's a scratch, that's a scratch, and then there's a few little scratches on these blues here, so uh, I've got to keep that in mind when I do this. However, I can still go ahead and come in And what I like to do, this is just me personally, is I don't like to try and keep, you know, you see me laying this across the whole line here, but I'm only weathering right now uh, the parts that are the base coat purple. I'm not actually weathering any of the, uh, the brown, which was uh, Vallejo Beastly Brown, or any of the other blues. I'm, I'm just doing the base coat right now. I'll come back in and with these brown bits and whatnot, that's where I'll probably come in with some rust or some copper color. And uh, this one was a little too light, so I'm going to come back here again. And I'm just, I'm swiping from front to back right now, very lightly. If I wanted a harder edge on something, for instance, right here, let's do an angle one right here. And uh, for this one, instead of swiping front to back, I'm just going to go along the, the line. Yeah. And it's, it's really, you see how fast, how fast it moves. It's pretty quick and easy. go and it's kind of fun because you you don't have to be afraid of making mistakes if you happen to make a mistake you can always correct it with some Tamiya thinner or worst case scenario you can just paint it over with some base coat Now this gray that I'm using is actually kind of a blue color. It's a, it's a very, very cool gray. You know, your coat is kind of a brownish color. There's always a Firefly reference. For everything. And I'll do the same thing right here. I'll start with a line across for the top. Hey. Okay. Okay. Now I'll come up to. My bride is a little sick right now, so I'm going to stop this soon to go take care of her. And now that I've done the line across the top, I'm going to angle that and go back there like so. And try and match the angle here. Like that. And 
now the same thing along here. I've got to decide what I want to do for here. I'm thinking I'm going to do angles like this. See, that didn't look quite right, so I'm going to come back here and add a little bit more. That's much better. And you see how I've got this one here, so I'm just going to continue with a few more like that. Now these brushes have a foam head and they've got a little brush head. I'll be honest with you, I hardly ever use this brush head because the, once you apply it with the foam, the, uh, what the brush is going to do is it's just going to knock it back a little bit, but only a little. It really doesn't matter too much, so I don't use it very often. And like I said, with this with this work, less is more. It's uh, it's hard to know when to stop and put the weathering pastels down. And I probably I probably go a little bit overboard with them, but it's also just a lot of fun. <laughs> 